and it was just what is happening and it was ever since then every time we look at like the rankings in Amazon or something else it's just it's a whole new world it's just, this is amazing I've enjoyed writing my whole life, but as far as being a serious author, I started taking it seriously when um, I started homeschooling my kids. Um, and I started studying the craft of writing. I wanted to get better at it. And then by the time they graduated high school, I had um, some, some works that I could work with and get put out. As far as published books, is this your first, your third? This is my debut novel, yeah. It was funny, I was writing another book when Lee got into my brain and she would not leave me alone. So I had to stop writing that book, write this book, and then I went on to complete that first, that other book. But this is my debut book, my first published book. How does that feel to put a, a, a book out in public for the first time and go through the process, looking for a publisher and you know, going, putting yourself out there at book signings? What is that like? Um, it's a whole mix of things. It's, it, it's frightening because you're putting something out that's very personal to you. Um, it's frustrating because um, it's just hard to break in. There's so many people trying to do that. Um, but perseverance and you know just believing in yourself and somebody else will believe in you if you just hold to it. The person who ended up believing in you, uh, unexpected? Um, you're talking about Red at the grocery store? Um, yeah, it was. Um, well, the way that happened is I was um, signing books and there was a lull in my sales. And so I'm sitting there alone, kind of bored. Nobody's talking to me for a while. And then he came over because um, he saw me sitting there alone. And he asked if he could make a TikTok video. And I said, sure. And the next thing I know, the internet, it blew up. <laughs> I am not an author, obviously, but I, I've done different things for different companies like career fairs and I know for me like sitting out there by myself waiting for people to come it's boring I get a little antsy in that lull when you were just waiting kind of by yourself in the Kroger what, what was that like um it was boring mostly I um you know I, I think Reddit said it de dejected I'm not sure I agree with that one but um yeah it was boring it, it, it comes and goes but I also use that time a lot of writing time is imagination time so i plot out you know scenes and scenarios and what if this conversation takes place and what if they meet a person like that and would this be interesting for other people to read so i mean it's time well spent but after i think by the time red came around to talk to me i'd already been there for quite a few hours when red told you i'm going to post this TikTok, did you think anything of it? I didn't think anything of it at all. I, I didn't even have a TikTok account myself um, on, you know, Saturday and Monday. I got a TikTok account to respond to all these great people, you know, reaching out to me. Did you know anything about TikTok, what it was, how it worked? Oh, I knew what it was, how it worked. I still don't know how it worked. I mean, I'm an engineer and in how nine-year-olds are doing this, I do not know. <laughs> Tell me how you found out that it had blown up. We were uh, watching TV, and um, my wife was getting notifications that people were requesting signed copies, and my phone was buzzing that people were um, signing up, subscribing to my website, and the more that happened as the night went on, we got looking into it, and it was just, what is happening? And it was ever since then, every time we look at like the rankings in Amazon or something else, it's just, it's a whole new world. This is amazing. <laughs> Oh, I get choked up easy. What's choking uh, you up now? Oh, it's just the, the love of outpouring of generosity and support. You told me that this makes you think of kindness. Oh, absolutely. This is like textbook how kindness works. Red took five, ten minutes out of, his, out of his day just to be nice to some guy sitting alone selling books. And the generosity that poured out of that is just amazing. You have kids that are, or at least a child that's out of college. So I know mm -hmm. you've seen a lot of life. Uh, are you a veteran, is that right? I'm a veteran. I was in the 82nd Airborne Division in the infantry. So I'm very proud to say my son is going to serve. So you're a veteran, your husband, you've got kids, so you've lived a lot of life. Mm -hmm. um, what, did, what did you learn from this? Did this teach you anything or surprise you at all or reinforce anything? It reinforced um, some things that I, that I really believe, um, that people are generally good that generosity is just waiting for an excuse to happen. 
um, red was that excuse. So. What else about it makes you emotional? Because I can't imagine <laughs> you, you do this book, you're sitting you know, at Kroger by yourself, and all of a sudden thousands, tens of millions of people have watched this and cheered you on. I, it, I, it's just boggles the mind. It, it's just insane. And I, it wasn't expected. And I never expected anything like this. I'm, you know, I'm selling these books at Kroger thinking a day of 18 to 20 books is an incredible sale. And next thing you know, I'm number one sales on Amazon. It's, it's just incredible. But I think that's part of the struggle of, of being a new author, um, especially if you go with the independent publisher or you self-publish, is getting that word out. I mean, I'm sure there are other really great books out there that aren't being seen just because they don't, how do you get that word out? It's just so hard to get noticed. When you, how long between when you met, what day was it that you were at Kroger? I was at Kroger on um, Saturday, January 1st. And what day was it that you started to notice things were picking up? It was uh, Sunday, um, Sunday evening. So just a day later? Just a day later. When just a day later. When you in bed now? as this is all happening and you're like about to shut your eyes, what races through your mind about this? Like, how do you even process it? What, what, what goes on in your mind? Um, well, I, I, to be honest with you, I just accept it as the way things are going right now. This is what God's doing with me right now, and I just go with it. You're a religious man? Yes, I am. So how do you see this through that lens? <laughs> um, well, I just see it, you know, as... Um, the faith of a mustard seed and the tsunami of blessings that can come from it. It's really about all you can say. It's, um, you know, I, I had believed in the book and, um, and I think you know, perseverance, hard work, you know, what is the, you know, the Lord helps those who help themselves. So you got to put in the effort. And I think eventually those blessings will come if you persevere and stick with it. Is this something you pray for? All the time. All the time, yeah. It's, and, uh, you know, it's usually an open-ended thing. It's like, you know, you know, you know our situation, help. And whatever God wants to do after that, it's up to him. Far be it from me to tell God what to do. Unless I want to make him laugh. <laughs> I think I make that laugh a lot. Um, you said your situation. How, how will this influx of attention and funds and all that, how will this help you and your family? What does it mean to you guys? Well, it means a lot to me. Um, the the comments that I'm seeing on Amazon about people who noticed the the TikTok sent them to Amazon, but the comments that they really liked the book and they enjoyed the content and and um, especially the meaningful ones to me are it's like I you know I gone off reading but this has re reignited my desire to read or my children and I are going to read this together those are the meaningful ones. To know that you're going to. This book is going to touch so many families that way. Yeah, absolutely. To um, have an impact that's going to change somebody. And, and hopefully other people are going to get a bump out of this too. I mean, it's, I believe in sharing the wealth, you know. And if other authors um, see a bump in their sales because, you know what, this indie author did this, maybe other indie authors will come up. Or if my publisher, they're a small publisher out of Houston, if they see a bump out of that because they've been great, more power to them. The more people who can, you know, benefit from this is, is just great. Do you know, I mean, I know we talked about this on the phone, do you have any idea how many books you've sold, a rough estimate? Um, I think my publisher said something like 5,000 books, which is a huge number of books, really. I mean, it's not like you, I would love to be able to say, oh, millions of books, but, you know, 5,000 in book sales is an awful lot of books. Um, I think the if I remember correctly, debut authors can expect maybe 1,000 books be sold. So I'm well above that mark and very grateful. We only get about a minute or two to tell a story like this on TV, so I always ask my interview subjects, what do you think the, the message is in this story? What do you hope our viewers take away from your story? Well, I hope they take away the message that, like I said earlier, five minutes of kindness from one person has made such a huge impact. And I think, you know, you can do that anywhere. Just, you know, tell a bad dad joke to the grocery store clerk or anything like that. Just a few minutes of kindness can really make a huge impact in somebody else's life. Tell me a little bit about the book. 
the synopsis. I heard it in the video to read, but give it to me too. Sure. So it's the story of a teenage girl who teams up with a ghost with multiple personalities to help solve the mystery of her parents' murder. She goes to live with very wealthy family members she never knew she had um, and has amazing adventures after that in trying to figure out who killed her parents and why. From the moment you got the idea of the book to the time you published it, how long did that take? Um, wow, I, that one probably took about eight months, eight to 12 months. It, it, it was really, um, it was really a good, um, a good flow. It, it, it's, I don't want to say that it wrote itself because there were moments of struggle and was like, you know, I got myself, painted myself in a corner here, how do I get out? But, um, it, it, this one went together fairly quickly, I think. And are you, I know you said this is your first novel, but you worked as an engineer. Are you retired? Are you still working? No, um, I quit working as an engineer um, and started homeschooling my kids at the same time my wife graduated. Oh, wow. um, and we moved to a new city and we had a conversation about that. That was um, in the Cleveland area of Ohio. Oh. And we had a conversation about that and we decided that homeschooling would be the best thing for our family and for our kids. And it turned out to be great because, you know, I could talk about my kids forever. They're just wonderful. And it led you to this passion of writing. Yeah. The way well, that is always, I was, I was that kid at school who looked forward to the writing assignments. <laughs> so that, that's always been there. Um, but it just wasn't um, sharp and it wasn't polished. It was, it was one of those, this, I like to do this. And I've started lots of little stories and they were all really bad. But eventually they got better. <laughs> I think what's great too is that even though you always loved writing, you know, it wasn't until you retired from your job and started homeschool teaching that, you know, you, you learned that this is something you wanted to do. And to me, part of the lesson, too, is it's never too late in life to start to do something else or learn what you love. Oh, no, the adventure is never over. The adventure is never over. Anything else? Oh, and just tell me a little bit about your service again, please, sir. Um, so I was, in the, um, I was in the Army, the Infantry of the 82nd Airborne Division, 1st uh, Battalion of the 505th in Airborne Infantry, <laughs> to be specific. Did you, were you a big reader back then or writer even then? Um, I've always been a big reader, but it's a struggle for me. I have a touch of dyslexia, so it's a real struggle for me to read. Numbers are even worse, so I have to read very slowly, or the faster I read, the more jumbled it gets on the page, so I have to read slowly. You get even more impressive. I mean, even, even having to deal with that becoming a published author, I feel like that probably makes it a little harder, but you were still able to do it. Well, I think anybody can overcome it. You, know, you just have to embrace who you are and what your struggles are because we all have them so you just have to embrace them and work around them and have the courage to say i will overcome i know that you said in, the, in an open-ended way it's just sort of a prayer answered what is your prayer now after all of this has come your way um it, 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 ever since this happened my prayers me you know, my prayers are pretty simple i'm a pretty simple guy the first one is just thank you you know and whatever's next with you um, I pray that if anything comes out of this, somebody can get inspired or, or feel what they need to feel or some help comes to them in some way through what I've done, then that's, that's great, you know. Um, but basically, my, lately my prayer has just been, you know, thanks. Big thanks. <laughs> There's a, a message you want to say to, to Red. Um, well, I mean, what would it be? Well, it, Obviously, it's how grateful and thankful I am that he took time to be so kind to me. Like I said, I was just sitting there bored, nobody to talk to, and he just came over and, out of the goodness of his heart, said, you know, there's this guy sitting there bored. He's, you know, I'll go talk to him, lighten up his day a little bit. And that small, you know, little seed of, of kindness is huge. And you don't know him at all? He was a total stranger. He, I didn't know who he was when he came in and he bought the book. Um, you know, he just said he wanted to support the author, asked if I could, uh, if he could make a TikTok video. I'm sure if I could help you out, by all means, you know, whatever I can do to help out somebody else. The book came out um, November 22nd, oh, right, be right before Thanksgiving. And I've been um, having book signings, at, like Half Price Books, and Kroger's has this great um, authors in the grocery store program, which is how this all came about. About, do you have any idea how book sales were going from November to now before all this? Um, I was averaging about 20 books a sales event, um, and I hadn't held that many. 
Um, on Amazon, it wasn't that great, and it's because, like I said, it wasn't getting noticed um, because it's hard to stand out. It's such a thick field. Oh, and you said that you're getting messages from folks all over the world. I am. It's it's a. It, I mean, that's one of the things that's really bizarre. On you know Saturday, I don't think twelve people knew my name. Now I'm getting love from Bulgaria, and um, people from Australia are asking me to you know talk to them on their talk shows and how do you wrap your brain around that i'm still struggling with it your um, mentality and like your as you're sitting from november or december and those book signings until the most recent one like you, you talked about like your writing process you just sat mm -hmm. there whenever there was moments of boredom but like there's also like you got to maintain positive like we're going to get sales say we're going to even if it's not a lot like what did you tell yourself throughout that whole process those feelings that you had there and then to now being having this this great success too um i just persevered you know um kept doing what i was doing you know you know i my my day is pretty simple I, I get up in the morning and i pray that i'm a better human being than i was yesterday i go to bed at night apologizing for failing at that and in between i try to write stories that somebody might like to read and enjoy reading so it was just perseverance i've worked on other stories i'm working on a um, a screenplay now that I would love DC to pick up, but I don't know how to get it to them. <laughs> um, you know, and just keep writing, just keep persevering, keep doing what you're doing. Eventually, something will give. Well, I promise I'm not trying to force you to cry on TV, but I just want to say before we wrap up, I see you getting choked up throughout the interview. Is there anything else about this that is making you emotional or that's touching your heart that you think you want to say? The thing that makes me emotional is the love of the people. Um, they they saw this thing of this guy not getting any um you know struggling to sell his book and it's doing what he has to do is working hard and is out there and they gave me a chance and that's just beautiful and i think part of it for me at least is like i said i don't like to sit out there alone i get lonely and stressed and bored and nervous and a lot of people would choose all right if not a lot of people are coming up i'm gonna leave uh you didn't do that no um like i said i i, I have a lot of patience and a lot of perseverance and um, I'm a pretty chill guy, so <laughs> I don't mind sitting there. I'm comfortable with my own thoughts. And like I said, a lot of times I plot out scenes for books or movies or, you know, um, that's a large part of writing is, you know, the fantasy land in our brains. <laughs> There's probably medication for that. <laughs> Message to other authors. And then, like, now that he's got a TikTok, we'll be like... Oh, yeah. Are you going to... What are you doing with your TikTok? You I'm just out now. So what's what's the future of the TikTok? Oh, I'm just keeping people up to date on what's happening, making sure I'm thanking everybody, um, putting out some things like my. I talked to my publisher this morning, and an audio book is in the works now. A hardcover version is in the works now. So just keep people updated as long as they're um, interested. I think they deserve to know the the latest news. And our last question for you. Um, any message to either other struggling authors or anyone who's really struggling to get their passion project off the ground? Um, you know, just work hard. And um, it, it, that's a hard question to answer, really. Um, the, the big thing is, at least for me, the biggest thing about, and I, I'll t I can only talk about writing, but the big thing is invest the time to learn the craft. Know what you're doing. I mean... You know, Picasso was a great impressionist and did all these wonderful things, but he knew how to draw the basic fruits and vegetables first, mm -hmm. you know, and so learn those basics and build and build and build from there.